how are you doing? I just thought I'd come and do a video and um, show you everything. So basically I'm doing a voiceover because the sound quality wasn't that great and just thought I'd get the message across and basically um, I'm going to be rebuilding Henry just making sure that he works well and get him working and possibly do this 060 shunter that I didn't actually end up doing in the end but I will be doing it. Um, if you like me working on the engines and locos um, let me know because I can do more. <laughs> I've got lots to work and lots to clean um, and if you're new to this and, and interested in it you can follow me on my journey of discovering how to get them working better. So basically um, this is Henry if you didn't see it on the previous episodes my dad built me this engine um, and I've had him since I was four years old and he needs some love um, I think um, it's a bit dirty on the inside and the wheels also very dirty so very much overdue on the cleaning um, for the cleaning I use some electrolube um, uh, cleaner um, there's a whole ton of different ones that you can use um, so and I'm sure there's a million different uh, suggestions of uh, what people would suggest and it'd be interesting in your comments what you'd recommend to use because um, I'm just going by some bits that dad told me um, and I'm sure there's many other options out there so um, yeah fire some bits in the comments let me know what you'd use to, to clean your wheels um, so you know you could think of using maybe brake cleaner I don't know how well that would work but anyway, so with this, I just wanted to get um, Henry apart, and so by doing that, I need to get this um, long screw out the back um, and just kind of whiz through that, and then we can get the, the yeah, there he is, he's apart, that was fast. So I got the screw out, um, and now it's a case of just getting that body off, but being careful, I don't want to damage him, he's already got some damage, got some missing banding on him, so I want to paint that on uh, at a later stage couldn't get the chassis off straight away I couldn't work out exactly how it's held and I didn't want to go and bust it or break it so my view was to um, just be gentle and remove too many things so I didn't need to unscrew uh, the bogies um, but I did um, so fine um, I could screw it back on afterwards understanding a bit more about how this went together originally so but it's enjoyable just taking things apart I don't know if you guys do it very often but taking things apart is uh, an enjoyable process because you learn how it went together I guess that's the true nature of reverse engineering it's what makes us engineers naturally so the chassis is off it's all good um, one thing I noticed straight away from when I'd seen some of the other engines is this motor is ginormous um, from because I, I felt a bit of weight in it but thought maybe that was the chassis. I've been playing the camera views because I wasn't happy. Um, I'll be playing with it again. You'll see it flipping around. And basically, um, you'll see that um, it's got that large motor. And what I want to do is clean the commutator. Um, that's the screw that was holding in those bogies. Um, and I want to clean the commutator, take the brushes off so I can clean them. Just make sure everything's got the old sludge out of it. When I rebuilt the... Ren Diesel Way 60 for my last video. Um, the it was filthy, but my dad said to me that was from the 50s and 60s. It was made for three rail, and then he converted it to two rail um, for me when I was younger. Um, when he obviously converted it into Diesel, the uh, Thompson tank engine um, character, and with that, um, I, I took it apart. It was like even on the magnet all around the armature, it was all just black. So I cleaned all that off, cleaned the commutator, and then I re oiled the little bearings, top and bottom, um, put some oil on the gears and stuff like that. So I did the same with that. And I got myself a good old PP3, uh, run that on it, and um, just just run that over the top of it, um, get them working first, and, um, and then crack on and clean. Um, I basically just kept checking with the PP3 to make sure that I didn't ruin anything. And now I got my electrolube and I'm cleaning it with loads of earbuds and you can see just how black those earbuds are getting. So I just work my way through and just clean it and when it black stops coming off then that means it's alright. So really just watching it through um, you'll see what I'm doing. 
basically removing things that can remo- be re- removed, um, giving them a clean up, putting some bearing oil on bits that move, being really careful not to get them onto areas that might ruin things or drip through. So just being really careful. I'm using my scalpel blade just to kind of hook off some bits that really don't want to work, uh, like c- get clean. But as you can see, the wheels are getting really, really shiny during all of this. Really enjoy this process. Um, might have to buy some more earbuds after this so I can even just do my e- ears. But I took the bottom plate off that held the uh, sprung parts that obviously make the contact for one side. And it's one half done through the axles um, for the, I guess, the negative or whatever. Um, and then on the other side, um, I've got... Uh, the little wires that pick up on the inside of the wheels. So I made sure they're clean as well. That was quite important. But we'll put it back together, um, which is nice and quick. And we'll look at doing some detailing. So with a, a brush, we just get rid of all the dust and fluff and there's all sorts there. But what I really wanted to do was touch up the red banding uh, just with a steady hand, make that nice. Um, I'll retouch up at another point, but there's lots of little areas which had chips from years and years of abuse. Um, and as a youngster, I probably didn't look after it as well as I could have. So now I'm just literally just touching areas up. And, you know, on the chimney, putting the black bits, putting it, it needs to be black. So now we go up to the loft, as you can see. I'm going to get Henry out, and we're going to see how well he runs. I'll get myself all set up, and I'll leave myself to the loft version of me. Okay, I haven't honestly run this yet. So we just I just thought I'd turn the lights on the loft. Let's get up here. Put Henry on. His tender's full of coal, so he's he's up for the job. Basically, it's like with Henry, he had a an issue with generating good a good fire. Um, and they ended up giving him mouse coal, and then they changed his body type, but he's still on the old body type, so basically it's like the new coal. So let's see how it goes. Oh, my way. But it works, eh? Oh. We can go nice and slow. Oh, didn't like that. Nope, he's good. Very happy with that. Oh, we've got to the joint. He doesn't like the joint. Should we get him to pull some cages? If I spin him round, we can go and pick up the cages. They're waiting for him over here. Is Bill the camera up here? And we'll get a good view of down here. How we're looking? We go on sixteen mil. Right. Oh, wrong way. Oh, it's stuck on the joint. I have to run a bit of speed in this one. Oh, doesn't like the joint. So the power supply goes onto the red light from time to time, yet everything's running nicely. But I know that my line one doesn't seem to do it for some reason. So I'll try the same. So put them on there, give them the best chance. If not, I'll have to put them onto my other one with the Hornby controller. Right, let's put it over. Put all these over. Ooh. Maybe that motor's pulling a lot of power. Right, I think we're all connected. I believe so. Right, let's try it on the first line. I'll have to move these 
Markings out of the way. Right. See if line one works out nicely for it. Yeah. That's cool. Watch them come tearing through. So if he's alright. Nice. Just going live with the camera. So I, I need to jump in on the voiceover here because I disconnected the mic whilst doing the recording and the small issue of having now not even the camera mic um, working. Uh, so clearly I need to fix that um, in my future plans. Uh, but no, this, this engine, Henry, uh, ran around extremely well. I'm running literally like one third on its speed and it's a monster going it's like it's got a v8 inside it because the noise it makes and the speed it was hurtling around was so impressive um i was loving it um i privately i didn't put it on the video but i really turned it up why well, it just slowed down for the corners it was like scale electrics this engine um but no he was very very impressive um chuffed to bits of how well he's going i've turned it down here i've gone to like kind of quarter speed and he's doing a more respectable uh, speed here. Probably going to scale a speed of about 100 miles an hour still. Um, but still looking fantastic as he's going around. So considering I got him when I was four and I ran him round to run him now and I'm 33. You know, near, that's 29 years later. Um, I'm chuffed to bits with it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put up some slow motion videos. Hopefully you'll enjoy them. I'll see you soon. Hopefully... I know it's a Thomas the Tank Engine, some of you won't like that, but for me, it's my nostalgia, my enjoyment, and to be honest, I'd like to get some of the other uh, little engines to, to have on the layout, just for my own kind of um, nostalgic purposes, really. Um, you can even get them in the 009 uh, size, so that'd be quite fun going around. Um, but anyway, um, thanks for watching. Hopefully you've learned something with uh, maybe getting some confidence to work on your engines and take them apart and clean them. I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm going to continue to take them apart and learn all about them. I've seen many other people do it, and I think I can do that too. Anyway, here's my slow-mo. Enjoy it, and I'll see you next time. Bye.